Some of you may have owned uh, an Airhogs plane similar to this. Uh, they come with a pump and you pump them up 50 to 100 times, spin the propeller and a two-stroke sounding engine starts up and then you would launch them and they would either smash into the floor or disappear off into the horizon. 3D Prints gave me some ABS filament a few weeks back and I've been experimenting with certain printing techniques as well as acetone smoothing and it's given me the idea to 3D print this compressed air engine. Now this is the Creality CR10, uh, you may recognise it from most of my videos. Uh, it's great for printing large stuff due to its large build volume, however I will not be using it in this video. Now this is the 3D printer that I will be using for this project. It's got nothing special over the Creality, you can still use the Creality CR10, however this is one of my older printers and since getting the Creality I stopped using it, uh, which gave me the idea to modify it slightly. So. Um, I've built an insulation box around it and I've also fitted it with a 0.2mm nozzle for uh, printing more precise uh, smaller parts uh, which will be needed for the piston and the cylinder in this engine. So let's run through the design of the engine. Many of the components are quite similar to a standard combustion engine in your car apart from instead of igniting a gas it just supplies a gas via a compressed air tank. The major components in the engine are the ball bearing at the top of the engine this sits on top of an o-ring uh, which acts as a valve system which I'll explain in a minute how that works. Below the ball bearing is a spring which is actually fixed to the piston uh, which is now shown in red. The piston is connected to a connecting rod uh, which is then connected to the crankshaft at the bottom. As with any other combustion engine in a car the crankshaft uh, translates the up and down oscillating movement of the piston into a rotational movement for the main drive shaft. So how is this engine powered by compressed air? The compressed air is fed through a high pressure line into the top of the engine uh, and the ball valve sitting on top of the o-ring prevents the gas from uh, moving into the cylinder. By rotating the engine uh, using your hand we'll push the piston up towards the top of the cylinder and the spring will be compressed because the uh, ball valve will be held down by the compressed air. When the top of the piston comes in contact with the ball bearing it will lift it away from the o-ring and therefore break in the seal. This causes the high pressure gas to flow into the cylinder. The spring continues to push the ball away from the o-ring to keep the valve open as long as possible and pushing the cylinder down with as much power as possible. As the cylinder gets to the lowest point on its oscillation, the spring should be just the right length that the ball bearing then seats firmly onto the o-ring again, keeping the compressed air from flowing in. The air then flows out of small holes on the side of the cylinder, bringing it back down to atmospheric pressure. Then to repeat the whole cycle, the engine needs to have some kind of flywheel. Uh, in this case, I'll be using a propeller and the momentum of the propeller then drives the piston back up to the top of the cylinder, reopening the valve and repeating the cycle again and again. I've got all the 3D printer parts here, uh, which have been acetone smoothed not all of the parts have been smoothed, uh, just the crankcase, the cylinder and also the cylinder head uh, valve part um, as well as the piston. The rest of the parts don't really need smoothing so I didn't want to waste too much time on that. Uh, I've also got all the hardware which I think uh, should be adequate to put this together. Uh, I've tried to work this out before building it um, but I might need to build some, make some more hardware, uh, maybe some shorter bolts or something. So. Um, Let's get on with the build and see how well it goes together. So I think I'll start by gluing the cylinder to the crankcase, uh, just so we get the general structure of the uh, motor. Um, what I have noticed just messing around with the piston is that it only seems to go in at certain angles. So here it's, it's really bad tolerances. Um, it grinds a lot. Here it just doesn't go in at all. And then here it seems to be perfect. So, um, it's obviously not perfectly cylindrical, but as long as it's smooth at one point, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, now let's add some glue. I'm just using CA glue. Um, I think this is CA glue. It slightly dissolves the ABS print, actually, um, so it should make it quite strong. I know I'll probably get comments saying you should acetone glue this, but I have attempted that in the past and it didn't end up very well. For those of you that don't know, CA glue is essentially super glue. Looks pretty good. 
So whilst that dries, I will get on with making the uh, the washers for the head of the cylinder. So for this to seal on the top there, it needs to have a, a gasket like on a real engine. Um, and yeah, I'm going to cut these out of, this is 0.5 millimeter rubber. Uh, should be able to buy this in most places. Um, and then I will use this to trace around because this, so this goes on top of the cylinder head and then the valve system will go on top of that. So there's two washers I need to cut out. So I've finished cutting out the washer and it actually proved harder than I thought to cut out with a pair of scissors. I should probably find somewhere uh, where I can order an actual, you know, proper sized washer. But I think this will do for now because it doesn't have to seal too much. So um, this will go on top of the, the top of, well this goes on top of the cylinder uh, with the big washer on top of that and then an O-ring that goes on top of that. Now this O-ring sits actually in the bottom of this valve system here. Um, but first I need to put in, this is a BB from just a regular pellet gun. Uh, they're about six millimeter BB pellets. The axe is our valve which lets the air into the cylinder. Um, so that BB goes inside the top there. And then the O-ring should sit inside there. So now that's a simple ball valve when the when the ball falls towards that, that ring there. And then this will mount on top of there. So I'm going to get on with the assembly of the uh, crankshaft now. Uh, I have these small uh, bearings which have an inner diameter of four millimeters, uh, which pop in like that. Uh, there's another one that goes on the inside here. So I have both of the bearings mounted inside. Uh, there's an outer bearing and the inner bearing. And then the main uh, shaft output will go through there. It's so just an M4 bolt through these four millimeter bearings. Uh, but first I have to attach this to this 3D printed part should just thread through. So this gives the crankshaft the offset uh, for the piston to obviously turn around. Um, now I need a few small bolts and also this is the conrod between the piston and the crankshaft. Uh, it needs some small brass uh, spacers. I made these out of just a brass tube. They're two millimeter inner diameter I think and three millimeter outer diameter. So I've just press fit the uh, small brass washers into the conrod. Uh, obviously I can't find bearings small enough for this, um, so this will do for now. Uh, the next thing to do is fit the conrod to the piston. Uh, this is fairly simple. Uh, just an M2 bolt goes through the piston. So the piston is attached to the conrod, it's running nice and smooth. Uh, now it's time to put the crankshaft inside the engine like that and slide the piston into the top just remembering which way it goes in and then mounting the final bolt to hold the conrod to the crankshaft. So the main construction of the uh, drive end of the engine is done. Uh, the main output shaft is here uh, then if you look on this side you can see conrod and the crankshaft and then also the piston at the top. Now it runs relatively smooth however there's a bit of play forward and backwards on the shaft uh, so I need to probably fit something here to stop that um, as that play kind of jams the engine a bit. But yeah let's put the two parts of the engine together the compressed air section and then also the drive section of it and give it a little test. I've mounted a very small propeller onto the engine. It's the only one I had lying around in, in my shed. Um, but for now, it's actually looking quite promising. If I blow in the top here, I'll give you a quick demo and it, it sounds really cool. Yeah, I know, I really, <laughs> I look really stupid right now. Oh, I'm going to go lightheaded. But yeah, it, it sounds really cool. So I think once I get 
um, a pressure chamber with a lot more air. Um, I think this could be a success, so I'm getting quite excited. Anyway, let's go to bed and get working tomorrow. So the spring for the piston arrives today in the post, and I managed to mount that uh, to the piston so that it holds the ball valve open for just a bit longer, as I mentioned earlier in the video uh, with the diagrams. Uh, I've also made an air reservoir out of a plastic bottle. Uh, I don't think this bottle's rated to very high pressure, um, so I'm not going to pump it up too hard. Just uh, low pressure for these, these tests, uh, just to see if it actually works. I mean... If it does, that would be pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, I guess there's nothing else to do but give it a few pumps. I can hear some air leaking, but it sounds like it's around these bottle bits. The actual engine seems all right. I'll pump up a bit more. That's about 10 PSI. Should we give it a test? Right, three, two, one. <laughs> I'm speechless. That actually worked. 3D printed compressed air engine. Let's do it again, let's do it again. Am I getting too excited over this? Three, two, one. Doesn't seem to quite be running smooth, but it's, the fact that it's running, I'm just way too excited. Right, I'm gonna pump out one more time. Try and stand a bit further back. Whew, I'm getting nervous now. I uh, should probably put up some kind of protection. I'll tell you what. That's not gonna do anything, but... Put it there, put it there just in case. In three, two, one. Oops. So I'm going to end the video there. Uh, I think that was a pretty good success. Uh, proof of concept that you can 3D print a compressed air engine. Uh, I know there are people out there that have done it before, but I don't think I've seen anyone use the air hogs technique uh, style engine with the spring and the, the ball valve at the top. Um, so I'm happy that uh, I managed to get that working. And um, if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell notification icon uh, because you do not want to miss what I'll be doing with this engine next. As usual, all my patrons will gain access to the STL files from this. So if you wish to 3D print your own air compressed engine, please support me via Patreon. Uh, it really helps me out. And don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Also share this video if you liked it. So uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.